Hi guys, so the slap chop painting technique, love it or hate it, it's certainly been a game changer for me as it's taken me from painting, well, a handful of figures a year to, uh, well, in the last six weeks I've done six kill teams as well as several other figures. Um, and here's one of obviously those kill teams that I've done. Um, I appreciate this, this sort of technique's been around for donkeys, uh, goes by other names. Um, and a lot of you guys maybe will be saying, yeah, yeah, I've been doing that for the last few years and all that, which is awesome. But for me, obviously, I only came across it about six weeks ago. Um, and yeah, say, absolute game changer for me. And probably many other people who maybe just sort of coming across this sort of technique, well, maybe today. Um, yeah, and obviously, it's October. So I've still got a bit of a cold. So you will hear me throughout this, this thing sound a bit croaky every now and then. Apologies for that. <coughs> yeah, point in the view there. Um, yeah, so October. I'm going through my, uh, my well, I've got a bit of a bits box. I've had about two years, and it's got some, well, lots of orcs in it. Um, some are sort of put together, some are semi-put together, and some haven't seen the daylight for years. So, yeah, as it's October, I'm going to go through them. I'm going to kit bash a few of the bits together, and, yeah, see what I can make up and get them painted, which I absolutely love doing now. I love painting. And say so it's all because of the uh, slap chop painting technique. And I know a lot of people don't like the name, I'm in two minds about the name because it seems more like an appropriate name for kit bashing. Uh, but I do know also it used to be an infomercial. So I, I know where it comes from and I know why it's kind of related because obviously it's it's fast and quick, which obviously it lives up to its name because this painting is very fast and quick. Anyway, enough of that waffling. Let's get on. Let's go for the bits box. And well, you've kind of seen what I'm making, so it's no real surprise. But let's have a little look anyway. So as mentioned, this bits box has been around for quite some time. Um, and it's probably been in the cupboard for about the past year. So as you can see, I've got quite a few bits and pieces in there sort of assembled. So this is the Blood Bowl Orcs, which I never kind of got around to playing. And then just a whole variety of arms, legs, and bits and pieces. And yeah, and obviously bits of bikes. So obviously there's three bikes that came with the, uh, the set that I brought. Um, again, would have been bought years ago. Uh, but obviously I'm going to do this one. Um, and this was a stage, it, it was, in the bits box. So it was like assembled and primed, ready to paint. Uh, but again, a year or so ago, I actually hated painting. So when it came to figures, yeah, not many of them actually got painted. Uh, but looking back or looking onto some pictures of this uh, this, this dude, um, I have noticed I have missed off several bits. Um, mainly Dakar. There's loads of, there's a big uh, gun that's been on the back, which I did, did actually pick up in the picture. Uh, but didn't realise it went with this until after I painted it and by then obviously it was too late also the other thing with this i should have done which i didn't and that is to there's quite a lot of um join mold lines which i should have really have scraped off but again didn't really see them so i started painting and by then it was like ah oh, oh well never mind so yeah i'm going to put this guy on a base uh mainly because obviously this guy is not going to be used for well for anything so this base size isn't the normal base size for 40k um well it's not normal base size for anything really it's just a, a round disc that I have, uh, which is ideal for making little, small little dioramas or just nice little um, bases to put figures on. So good using good old cork. Again, this is sort of stuff I've had in my drawer uh, for a good year or so. Very rarely used. Um, so it's nice to sort of get the stuff out now and yeah, make a little base, which uh, which is pretty cool. And so this is going to be like a desk ornament, uh, as in it will just well just sit on my desk. <laughs> it does what it says on the tin sort of thing. Um, so yeah, the glue wise, I'm using Gorilla Glue just because it's well, it's, it's kind of like a good go-to glue and it does dry reasonably quick. I probably could have just used PVA glue here, which obviously would have been a lot cheaper. Um, but say this stuff dries in about 20 minutes, which is great because then it means I, I can sort of crack on and sort of start painting it, which is uh, which is cool, as opposed to PVA, which will take well hours. Yeah, there we go. So everything's now primed in black. I mean, you can just about see them there on my uh, my desk. And yeah, this is where obviously the slap chop method comes in, nice and easy, nice and quick. Stage one, uh, well, stage one is actually the black priming. We're now on stage two, which is the uh, the undercoating, or underbrushing, or dry brushing. Again, apologies, guys. I've got a bit of a cold, and I think it's affected my head, um, and I, can't, I just can't think straight. Uh, but you know what I mean. You you can see what I'm doing on the TV there. Um, so yeah, dry brushing, uh, dry brush normally with a grey. Um, I've been trying out other colours, just to sort of see what the variations are when you do the contrast paint. Uh, but this one, I'm just sticking to the good old normal dry brush in grey, and then once it's um, it's all dried, 
then it's ready for me to just go over and dry brush with some white. Um, Say so very simple, very easy, uh, but the end result is just, well, just love it. Again, this sort of painting technique isn't for everyone. Um, I know a lot of people out there like to sort of build up their colours and do a whole sort of different kind of sort of look to their figures. Uh, but for me, the end result is, yeah, I love it. Um, the figures look nice and worn and battle ready. Um, and yeah, and again, it's, it's so quick. It's so easy. I say that this guy has been sitting in the drawer or in my bits box for two years. And the reason was, I, I knew when I painted him, I say this is a year or so ago, I would have ruined him. Um, he, look, he looked better unpainted than me slapping some paint on and just making a right hash of it. Um, so again, yeah, this, this technique, I know it's not new, it's been around for ages, but for people like me that are now excited about painting, um, yeah, you could have called this method whatever you want, um, and I'd be singing its praises, because it has just been wonderful for me. Yeah, and then third and final stage, again, this is so easy, couldn't be any easier, um, unless you've got someone else to paint the thing for you. Um, yeah, put on your contrast paints, or speed paints, dipping inks, or whatever kind of... Um, inks you've got or paints you've got that are obviously this way inclined um, and yeah so I'm sticking with the, um, the same green that I've used for all my other orcs just because I'm really loving this one and this is the uh, the contrast sort of plague bearer as one although I will have to get some new paint soon uh, because yeah because I've been painting lots of orcs it started to go down rather quick even though this again this paint I've had this paint for about well probably nearly two years as well um, and it's obviously just been sitting there unused unwanted unloved so the slap chop painting technique really is the way to go to get through your pile of opportunity and turn all those lovely uh, lovely figures into tabletop ready figures, which is awesome. So yeah, guys, just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons, as well as my sponsors for helping support the channel and making it so I can continue to sort of buy bits and pieces to keep making these videos. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down below as well as one at the end. And you also get to see sort of exclusive behind the scenes pictures and stuff of what I'm currently working on uh, yeah before it comes out on YouTube it's like I'm currently working on a chess set so that's gonna be pretty cool it's gonna be Orcs v Space Marines and yeah can't wait to show you guys what I've been doing someone did mention in a previous video about adding the speed paint medium to silver um, to sort of see make that into a speed paint so that's what I'm having a go at doing uh, obviously the thing is I've never used a speed paint medium before so I don't really know what sort of ratio it should be whether it goes like 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, or whatever it should be. Um, so I've kind of mixed some together. Unfortunately, it was difficult to sort of, um, well, to work out ratios because the silver kind of like didn't come out and just splodged out. Um, yeah. So maybe, guys, if you've ever tried using the, uh, the speed paint medium with uh, sort of silvers um, or any sort of metallic colour, let me know. And more importantly, let me know if it works and what sort of ratio uh, to go by. So, I mean, it has certainly made the, uh, the silver sort of more, well, I'd, I'd say more sort of watery rather than translucent. Um, but that's fine because eventually when I finish this off, I will go over all the silver bits and any sort of like normal painted bits uh, with a wash. So, but yeah, it would have been interesting to see that if the silver would have come out more like a contrast paint. Uh, but in my case, not so much. But um, yeah. That's obviously because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but the thing is, though, with this hobby, you never know what you're doing until you've done it or you've watched loads of videos on it. Um, and I must admit, I've not watched any videos on obviously using speed paints, mediums, um, well, with silvers or any sort of other sort of stuff. But um, there you go. So it's a great hobby. We all share stuff. We all learn and learn by our mistakes or by watching other people's. Because <laughs> um, I like to think sometimes when you watch my videos, you watch and think, oh, yeah. That's how I shouldn't do it. And then you go and do the proper way. Uh, but it is fun though. So my little orc wants the other uh, bike to go faster. So hence the reason why it's going to be red. Because we all know, um, yeah, red makes things go faster. <laughs> well, it certainly does in the, uh, the, the minds and heads of orcs. Uh, and that's the sort of what I'm going for here. And the other thing I like about this red is it's almost kind of like got a, a metallic-y kind of look to it or feel to it. Um, so it kind of works well on these um, obviously metal bits. So yeah, definitely going to do quite a lot of this bike is going to be red, just because it'll go so much faster, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so guys, if you are new here and you like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, as I am currently doing at least two videos a week. Um, normally it's about it's one a week, 
uh, but as it's the month of October or October um, and again because I am now doing this I'm loving painting figures and I've got loads of figures to paint um, that's the reason why there, there is going to be two maybe even three videos a week just because I'm absolutely loving it um, which is so great so yeah guys if you want to sort of hear something funny go and watch some of my old videos where you'll hear me constantly moaning and going on about not liking painting and it's almost like there's two um, two people working on this channel uh, there's the old me which you say would have looked at a figure thought about painting and then thought no I'm gonna go and scratch bash something and then just paint it like a rust bucket which used to be my go-to painting rust buckets I can paint miniatures I, I could never paint and yeah but it is it's, it's funny guys you go watch my old videos um, and yeah just hear me say how much I detest it whereas now all you're gonna hear is me saying how much I love it um, and so yeah you're gonna see loads more sort of painted miniatures which is uh, pretty cool probably more so um, kill teams as I have got several other kill teams coming uh, but I'll say this month it's October so you will see quite a few orcs but again, anything else you want to see in this, this channel, guys, let me know. Leave some comments. Um, always read the comments. And, yeah, generally, I always reply to the comments. So let me know what kind of sort of content you want to see, whether it is more sort of painting miniatures um, or doing some sort of scratch building or kit bashing. So I'm really enjoying the kit bashing, must admit. Um, again, I'm joining the kit bashing because I know I'm going to enjoy the painting afterwards. So yeah, I do want to make make more sort of figures up. And again, this this chess set that I'm building, I'm loving that because I'm I'm making obviously all the figures uh, to look like they're corresponding figures, whether they're a king, a queen, a rook, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah. So back to this, yeah, with the base, I kind of like the base how it was, but then I thought, well, could I make it better with with, with using some contrast paint on it? So that's why I'm using the grey. Um, just going to cover it fully with this. But obviously, after it's dried, I'm then going to do a white brush. So that's why in my head I was wondering, is it just going to come back to looking how it looks now? Um, and I think the end result is, yeah, pretty much. But I wanted to try it just to, uh, well, just to see if it did make any sort of difference. I mean, this might make some of the um, the darker areas or the nooks and cranny bits darker, uh, which is obviously good because that's kind of what you want. Um, and yeah, so it wasn't too bad. So there's quite a few colours where obviously you didn't use contrast, dipping inks or speed paints and they were just sort of painted normally. Um, but again, I don't like them because they look too, well, too clean, too neat. So that's why I love my washes and yeah, anything that was sort of painted that was rather metallic or normal paint, I then go over and give a, um, well, quite a healthy dollop of, uh, of wash. Um, yeah, I'll be the first to admit I sometimes do go OTT on the washes. But again, I like the, uh, the end result. I like the look. I like the fact that it does look like this thing is now old, worn, and um, very much used, uh, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, washes were sort of my favourite paint prior to uh, me using contrast paints, which is uh, pretty cool. There was one last sort of painting thing that I wanted to do, and that was the exhaust. Um, yeah, I want to try and make it look like it was all sort of heated up. So using the, uh, the yellow and the blue, um, but the yellow I've got always comes out more orange, but I kind of knew that, which is why I use the yellow rather than an orange, because the orange I've got comes out, well, orange, but maybe more red. Um, yeah. So using the uh, the orange or the yellow and the blue together, uh, the good thing is obviously they are quite sort of wet, which is nice, because then you can sort of feather them in quite well. Um, I've never really done exhausts much before. Um, so, yeah. So excuse the fact this, I'm happy with this. Um, but I know a lot of people will go, oh no, it should have been maybe a red in there or a different blue or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, for my first little sort of go, I'm kind of happy with the end result. And then it's obviously a bit of silver, just to tidy up where I went a bit too, uh, too slap happy. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, again, I'm really pleased how these turned out. Didn't take too long at all. Um, and they come off, obviously, say so these things are glued on these, uh, these little pegs uh, a good year, maybe two ago. And they still come off really well. So this super glue, well, uh, it's sort of semi-super, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I must say I do love this dude. And it's like that's why I bought the free bikers because I just absolutely love the look of them. Um, but yeah, never painted them because I just thought I was gonna gonna ruin it. So the base is all dry now, and now I can just do a bit of white brushing uh, or dry white brushing, um, just sort of like add some highlight edges to all the uh, well, all the stones. 
So this is what I say, it kind of does look pretty much how it looked before. Although I think some of the darker areas or some of the nooks and crannies are that little bit darker. Um, so yeah, it was worth trying to sort of see how different it would uh, it would look. Um, but yeah, overall, very happy with how, uh, how the base looks. And as it's going to be like a, a tarmac road, I just wanted to add sort of the uh, the white sort of center lines down down it. And yeah, I haven't got any masking tape. Otherwise, I would have used masking tape as obviously that's a lot easier and better to use. Um, so yeah, I just used some normal cellar tape, which um, yeah, it wasn't too sticky. So it, it just about stayed there. Uh, and then yeah, doing the old dabbing technique with the white just to make it look a bit more uneven. And yeah, job done. And just a case of sticking my old bike on there. And then this is how he looks. watching guys don't forget like subscribe share all that good stuff bye for now